Robert Allen here. Happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for watching and joining in. We are chatting with Chris Diamantopoulos about High Heat and a myriad of other fantastic projects. I have to say, this is a fun film, and you always play these fun and intricate type of characters. Uh, uh, thanks for your time today. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, really nice to meet you too, Brett. Thanks for having me, man. I'm always happy to talk about the the work that I'm lucky enough to get to do. It's it's great when you know f folks watch it and there's something to talk about. So it's great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about well this film. Let's start there. Uh, again, you've played a lot of different types of characters. What attracted you to this one in particular, and made you decide that you wanted to commit time to it as an actor and storyteller? Yeah. Great question. You know. It's funny, early in my career, uh, when I would read uh, magazines about the actors that I uh, admired and how they went through their process of choosing characters, I just always felt so sort of in awe of that notion of opportunity to choose, right? You know, because in early, er, er, early in my career, any work I got was sacred and I would, you know, take it with aplomb and, and yeah. just and, and do it. Um, and I guess it's like many things in life. You don't sort of realize that you're getting closer to the goal as you're doing it uh, because you're just so busy doing. Uh, I, I'd say sort of at this early midway point in my career, um, there is some choice involved, definitely. Um, and I think for me, it's it's really just a matter of, first and foremost, can I have fun with this? And, and you know, fun uh, being kind of an amorphous term in, in a in a comedy situation. Can I do something with a character that maybe I haven't explored before? Try out a different muscle. Try out something that might not be in my bag of tricks. Push me sort of in a direction that might make me a little uncomfortable. And for High Heat and the role of Tom, the character is more of a sideline character. And, and what I mean by that is he's kind of a wallflower and he's a little henpecked. And I haven't really played that energy uh, I hadn't played that energy before. Typically, I tend to play more acerbic or more aggressive characters. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, yeah I guess by virtue of of, of some of the uh, the dynamics of my uh, my energy as a performer, I, I I I guess, or or by virtue of where the industry has sort of uh, felt comfortable placing me temporarily, at least. But it's always been my uh, mission to not be able to be pegged down. And maybe that's to my detriment as an actor, because certainly the actors that I admire the most are the ones that have played themselves most often, you know, Jimmy Stewart or George Clooney, you know, I, 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 I uh, Cary Grant. I, I admire these actors because they're, they bring such a beautiful measure of their own personality, warmth and grace to the screen. And for me, for some reason, I chose this path of just wanting to uh, be different every single time. And I guess it's just because uh, I, I got into acting so that I could be anyone but myself. That's a great answer. And you do, I was just thinking as we were, as you were talking about, there is a wide range and this character is quite different, but also very important and driving the story and keeps things interesting because it's just, it's a wild ride, I feel, from start to finish. I've watched it twice now. And wow. I just, every time, yeah, I like to, I, I always do watch things. But when I get a chance to watch them a couple times, I always find myself looking at something differently, right? And going, wow, it's a very diverse world that you're in. And to play these different types of characters has to just be a lot of fun. Because it, it emotes through your performance that you're not just there delivering lines, but you're having a good time. And appreciate I think that makes it great for the viewer, you know? Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, even going back to the Kevin Hart vehicle that you were in, the, playing that character, the bad guy. Uh, we had your co-star on recently, too, about that film, uh, who played your brother in the film. Oh, John. You had John, John yeah. On. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, really, really good actor, good fellow, uh, an incredible collaborator. And I think similarly... Uh, to me has has had a, a very diverse career and has gotten to do some really, really interesting things. That was a neat project for a number of reasons. I, I think the main reason being, I had never worked with Kevin Hart before and I got to see firsthand why he is as successful as he is because that man is so devoted and dedicated to each of the things that he does. 
I was blown away by how prepared he was as a performer. He's got a million things going on, right? That was one of the things that he was doing at the time. But by God, he knew his lines and everyone else's. He knew where we were in the scene and the story. And that was a complex story and because we were shooting out of sequence, you know. Uh, and I was just, I mean, really, that move, that, that miniseries was an exercise in my watching uh, a, a titan of this industry really demonstrate um, his level of uh, concentration and control over his career. It was beautiful to see. And I loved, I loved playing a, a strong silent type. Again, not something I do. Typically, I play very verbose characters. So it was really neat to just sort of, you know, utter a couple of grunts here and there and beat the crap out of someone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, all of your work is fantastic. I mean, just I've been a fan for a long time. And thanks, Brett. Absolutely. When I found out the opportunity was presented to meet you and to chat with you about this great film, I was like, let's do it. This is fun. One last question again. You've done so many different projects, uh, including this. Is there one in particular that stands out to you as a highlight for you? Because you have worked hard and played so many different types of characters. I've been really lucky, man, um, because, you know, typically um, a lot of the sort of, uh, you know, off the mark roles, um, th they get snatched up pretty quickly by actors that have a, uh, um, a higher pedigree th than I have. So I've been lucky to be able to find roles that I was uh, really able to sort of turn into something um, special. Um, look, I loved making the Three Stooges movie with Pete and Bob Farrelly and Sean Hayes and Will Sasso. That was a passion project for me. I was a massive fan of the Stooges growing up, massive. Um, I mean, you know, photographically memorized probably 30 of their shorts, maybe more. Um, but I was just obsessed with them as a kid. And I never thought that I would have the opportunity, I mean, to be part of a film commemorating them, let alone to play Mo. Um, so that was that was a hard won project that I'm very proud of because, you know, um, we really poured ourselves into being as authentically the Stooges as we possibly could. I certainly did. Um, uh, so that that's one that stands out to me as a very special time in my life. Those those 14 or so weeks in Atlanta were very very special. Um, I did a small. Uh, uh, low budget television feature um, years and years ago for NBC when they were doing those salacious exposés about behind the scenes of Three's Company or Charlie's Angels. I did one that was behind the camera, the unauthorized story of Mork and Mindy. And wow. um, it was never really meant to be anything other than, you know, one, one of those movies, I suppose, quote unquote, but gave me a chance as a young actor to... Uh, explore and flex some character muscles that I knew were in there, but I'd never really been able to utilize. And I got to play uh, the late, great Robin Williams, God rest his soul. I know that it wasn't in the way that most fans would sort of expect a, you know, for lack of a better term, a, a biopic, because it you know, definitely wasn't authorized by the, by the Williams estate. And I have no idea if he watched it. And I'm, I'm certain that, you know, despite our best intentions of of displaying and portraying the reality that you know probably couldn't have been yeah. easy to see a film that wasn't authorized but as a performer it really gave me a chance to try some things that were dangerous and unexpected and it was exhilarating to be able to go into the voice and body and mind and mannerisms of a genius whom i admired my entire life so that was a special opportunity for me. Yeah, I've heard you share that story a few different times and most recently on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast inside of you talking about I guess my point in all of it is is that you've done so many things and there's this world that you're in is so different than what most people would be familiar with um and yet like because of all of the great roles, you've also fought really hard for a lot of these roles as well. And it just shows you that like, there is some freedom of choice, as you said at the beginning of our conversation, but at the same time, you have to treat it as a business and just work really hard 
because a lot of people are talented, but to have the energy that you have and to do the things that you've done, I think is what makes you stand out from the crowd, right? Because it just hard work works. That's the best way I can think of it. That's really nice of you to say. I mean, look, I think it goes uh, for any industry, certainly any uh, craft or any um, artistic form. If uh, what's the what's the saying uh, that that uh, talent without motivation and dedication is derelict? Yes. You know, you're, you're, I mean, there are plenty of talented people out there, and uh, uh, I could throw a nickel and hit a hundred of them that are far more talented than I. But I love what I do. And I've been doing it for, I've been doing it for almost 40 years now. And I still love it and it still mystifies me and it, and it still irks me in the same way. And I still get the same feeling when I step on a, a soundstage or a stage for that matter. It's holy ground and it's corny and cheesy, but I, I love acting. And it's, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning and it's what keeps me up at night, so. I love it. Well, this is a fantastic film. Remind our listeners and viewers, I've seen it. That's the beauty of being a journalist. But when can everybody get a chance to watch and where can they watch? Um, so we're talking about High Heat, which, of course, is uh, the, the new film that stars stars Olga, Olga, Kur, Olga Kurlenko and Don Johnson. Um, it's going to be releasing in theaters and on digital and, and on demand uh, December 16th. 2022 and uh, i think you'll enjoy it it's a a fun big exciting romp yes that is an understatement high energy from start to finish edge of your seat my son is eight and i was in the other room watching this and i was like man i wish he could watch this with me yeah. one of these days one of these days i have a whole catalog of films i'm going to introduce him to including silicon valley which was a lot of fun <laughs> by the way uh, but I really appreciate your time, Chris. It's been a true pleasure. Thanks for your time and graciousness chatting today. I really appreciate the kind words and, and I wish you well. And yeah, go, go slow with your son. I have a 12 year old boy. Uh, and, and I, I, my fatal mistake was being too excited to show him stuff too soon. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, take it, take it nice and slow. Yeah, we're good. We're, 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 we're on the Harry Potter films right now. Star right. Wars. Right. You know, those types of movies. You know what? Some, show him the three show him the three stooges. He I will. Like. You know, I was thinking about that as yeah. you were talking about it. And of course, a few Marvel films have been in the library, but uh, good, good, good. Three Stooges for sure. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so yeah. Check it out because he may actually want to go to the source material or maybe vice versa. Show him an old Stooges short and then show him the movie. That might be the way to do it. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so much fun. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, Brett.